This is the CL Yachts CLX 96. Now CL Yachts is a division of Choi Li, a Chinese shipyard with a really good name in building commercial ships. And you can see some of that influence in the CLX 96. They call it workboat chic. On this boat, they've brought in an American designer called Joseph Fadakis. This is the first boat he's designed. He has an industrial design background, and that's led to a lot of very interesting design decisions on board this boat. It's around $10 million US. Let's get on board and have a closer look. Right, let's start back here because there's already quite a lot going on. It hasn't got a traditional bathing platform. It's got this transformer platform. So this lifts up and out and then it's got built-in steps. So it can either extend down into the water to become a bathing platform and also your access down into the sea, or you can angle it up and it becomes your passerelle so it can help you get up onto key sides. It's also got an 800 kilogram lift capacity so you can sit probably a 13, 14 foot tender on here. And underneath this panel here, there's a built-in crane which also has an 800 kilogram lift capacity. So there's lots of flexibility here, depending on what you want to do in terms of toys, things like that. And it's not quite a beach club, but there's enough space on this platform that you can have some freestanding seating down here. You can have a couple of sunbeds, do with it what you want, but it's a nice, big, flexible space. There's access up both sides into the cockpit if you want to get an idea of how substantial this thing is, just look at that boarding gate. This is basically CO Yachts going, look how serious we are. Look at the size of our stainless steel. That is a very, very cool and very sturdy gate. In here to the main cockpit now. This is quite a cool arrangement as well. Now I've no doubt you could just have a table here if you wanted, but there are lots of outdoor dinettes on this boat. So this is a more of a sort of shady lounging area. You can see they've got one of them pulled out in a shades long format here. All three of them do that. So you can have all three out, you can have one out, two out. You can really do with this area what you want. It's nice and flexible. And it's served by this small bar area here. As you'll see on this boat, the galley is way forward. So it's quite nice just to have some amenities here in the cockpit so you can serve the people who are enjoying this seating area. And then you pick up one of the most interesting parts of this design is that the wheelhouse is shaped like this. Again, it's that commercial workboat chic as they call it but you really notice that here where you have these slanted glass sections and you can see the rearranged staircase as well. So that's the cockpit. Let's go and have a look at the interior. Through the Star Trek doors and into this main saloon area and another key feature is because you only have a helm and the top deck here, the living space can stretch all the way forward in the wheelhouse. And though it's very open plan, it's also quite nicely segmented. So you have lounging space back here, right next to the cockpit. Then you have your dining space amidships, and you can actually have opening doors on both sides. It's pre-engineered. This boat's only got them on the starboard side, but it means you can pop these doors open and head straight out onto the side deck. And then forward, you have this really lovely, sociable, home from home galley area with the island in the middle, with the big twin sinks sub-zero chilling space over here. You've got dedicated space for glasses on the starboard side, another wine fridge, loads and loads and loads of storage, full induction cooking and a good size oven. Yes, this is a big boat. It will be run by crew in many instances, I imagine, but this does feel like a sort of owner-run kitchen. Very sociable and, as I've said, a real home-from-home -home feeling. And this is a particularly nice spot. They call it the Champagne Lounge, where you have a built-in champagne cooler in the coffee table, but you're right forward, you're elevated, you've got a wonderful view out through these almost wraparound windscreens. You can really see that commercial style inward rake of the windscreen from here. Works really nicely. And it isn't a full custom boat, it's semi-custom. Whether you can go to the extent of having a cabin up here on this deck, like you do on, say, the Princess X95, that's a discussion to have with the yard. But when you see the cabins downstairs, you'd probably wonder why you need to do that. So let's head down there and have a look at them. And actually on the way down, I'll just point out that this is where the day heads is. It's actually in a really good spot because this is your side door. This is where you can get out onto the decks. This is where the crew can come in and out of the, the decks and get to the kitchen really easy. But it's also where the toilet is so guests can come in there and it's very quick to get to the facilities. Anyway, onto the accommodation. Now the cabin may not be on the main deck like it is on some of this boat's rivals, but it is a spectacular space. So we're forward here, right forward here on the lower deck. 
and this is the most amazing feature, this almost full width skylight. It's got electronic blinds so you can lie in bed, peel the blinds back and then you have this uninterrupted view of the sky, day or night, that is going to be pretty special. And really big hole windows either side as well. This is such a bright cabin, probably hard to pick up on camera just how bright this is, but it's a really lovely inviting space and it is huge. This is the widest part of the boat. This boat carries its beam a long way forward. So the owner is really feeling the benefit of that in this cabin. And you can see that industrial design influence in here as well. It's actually Corian, but it's all sort of nicely molded, built in, it all flows around really nicely. It's very, very tasteful, very eye-catching. Quality feels lovely as well. And there's another neat trick. This 65 inch TV is actually connected to a camera feed on the bow. So you have a forward facing bow camera that you can watch from the comfort of the bed. Another great bit of design is that they've got full beam bathroom and storage space here. So often it's segmented bathroom one side and you have storage the other. But on this boat, because all of the storage is in this unit here, the bathroom can be full beam. So you have a toilet this side, a toilet that end, separate sinks, and then a massive shower in the middle. It's very luxurious and a very good use of space. And that continues with the guest cabins. So heading back out of the master cabin, this here is the companionway down from the main deck. And then on the center line, you can head amidships towards the guest cabins. It's down a couple of steps. Again, really tastefully done. This boat has got the satin walnut oak flooring. You can have it in gloss if you want, but this is a nice contemporary feel. And I like the fact you've got the stainless steel detailing in here. They've got really nice subtle backlighting. And then either side here, we've got the guest cabins. They're twins, but they have electronic sliding berths. You can slide them together and create a double in an instant. If I just pop inside, you can just get an idea of the scale. Headroom throughout this interior is absolutely superb. And yeah, these berths slide together to create a double if you want to. And both of these cabins have an ensuite with a separate shower cubicle. But the star of the show of this guest accommodation is just behind me here. Before we get there, guests actually have access to a washer dryer here. There is a set in the crew cabin, which we'll look at later, but nice to have one here that the, the guests can use of their own accord without having to involve the crew. And then this is another really, really clever cabin. Again, it's full beam, it's a midships, and this is the VIP cabin. And wow, what a lucky VIP you are on this boat. Another really clever use of space. You have the bathroom over on this side, sliding pocket doors. So these just pull together. So you have a bit of privacy. Obviously you have the smoke glass, toilet that side, shower that side, twin sinks in the middle with a phenomenal view out pretty much at water level. There's blinds there as well for a bit more privacy. Again, you can see the headroom, totally flat floor, enormous bed. The proportions of this accommodation are really impressive. Some other cool points in here, they love a camera feed on this boat. So you have the camera feed of the forward camera that we mentioned in the master cabin feeding to that TV. But this in fact is not a skylight because we're right underneath the main deck. This is a screen with a camera feed that is pointing directly to the sky. So you basically have sky gazing through a screen from your bed. Now we're in Florida, so it's a completely blue sky, but if you had cloudy sky, a bit more drama up there, it would all be fed to you to that screen that you can watch from bed. Really cool idea that again, it's just a little bit of something different that you, I certainly haven't seen before. That is fresh thinking from CO Yachts. So that's the lower deck. Let's head up to the very top of the boat from here. So here we are on the top deck and there's a lot going on here. It's the helm station, it's another living area, it's a sun deck. It's a really important part of the boat. And the most striking thing about the helm station is just how business-like and well commercial it feels. And that's no surprise given this shipyard's background, big upright screens, no nonsense dashboard, fantastic stid, multi-adjustable chairs. It's a really nice purposeful dash arrangement with everything underneath your hands. And you have this amazing use of glass all the way around. Again, like downstairs, it's really, really bright and it's flexible too because you have drop down windows on both sides. These big panes on either side drop right down and you can drop down the aft window. So you can probably hear the air conditioning's blowing today. But if it's not quite so hot, you could use natural breeze just to ventilate this area, open up the door and go out onto the aft deck. But yeah, this is a really, really cool space and very, very commanding driving position. You're looking over the Portuguese bridge, you can just see the tip of the bow. This boat is covered in cameras as well, so you can easily see what's going on around the boat. 
Really, really fantastic professional feeling setup. Let's go have a look at the sun deck. Again, it's nice how this space combines with the internal areas. I've got the window down now, so you can see that this is opened up to that area where you've got cooling space, you've got a sink. More than out here, there's a barbecue too, but you're really not short of ways to feed and water your guests up on this deck. And this really is the sunbather's paradise. There's a sunroof here, so you can shelter this eating area if you want to dine out here, but you can open this back and let the sun pour down. There isn't much gloss wood on this boat, but there certainly is up here on this deck. Look at that table, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's fixed, but there's plenty of space around this side to put more chairs if you do want to dine out here. This is a nice little spot here. Again, you've got a little wet bar there. Facilities are really good. And this being angled towards the American market, of course, of course you've got to have the grill. And they've got the Malibu out back here. You can do a serious bit of cooking on the back of this thing. And it's nice, it's out here at the back, you've got a good view. All the smell of the cooking should disappear off the back of the boat. Works really, really nicely. And then from here, if we walk past this staircase, which obviously leads back down to the cockpit, you have unbroken access on both sides to, well, it's called a Portuguese bridge usually, but they've called it a Portuguese terrace because it's so big. Ultimately, it's a great big living space just forward of the wheelhouse. But it's really nice. It's quite simple up here. It's all freestanding furniture. Sunbeds, a bit of storage and pop-up lights. But yeah, this is a really, really lovely space. And again, a great place to take in the severe rake of this windscreen. It really is quite striking. Such a part of this boat's profile and its character. You can see this glass up here as well. That glass you can see above head level around the perimeter of the wheelhouse. This is it here on the outside and a nice commanding view over the bow. But there's something really cool down there that we need to go and have a look at. So we'll head down another unique design point in this boat, which is this reverse flybridge staircase. Of course, most of the time, you'd expect the stairs to run down this way, but on this boat, they run up that way. And actually it works pretty well and leaves space down here to get down to the crew cabin. We'll go and check that out in a minute. For now, let's head forward. If you can hear those planes flying overhead, I'm really sorry, they still seem to think that dragging banners behind planes is a good way to communicate with people in South Florida. So sorry about that, but hopefully you can still hear me. Good, good side decks. Look at the size of this stainless steel here. This is super, super chunky. And actually, you notice when you lift up these lockers, not only are these massively substantial, but you've got nice smooth mouldings underneath. It's all really nicely finished. And this is just fantastic storage space for all sorts of gear. It's got all the covers in here at the moment, but yeah, you've got these on both sides. Really useful to have that sort of thing. And the, this is a really great part of this boat. Pop-up lights as I struggle to do them, but there you go. A bit better at night than in the glaring sunshine. And again, we're on top of the master cabin here. And as I said downstairs, this is the widest part of the boat. Beam carries a long way forward. And this is just a fantastic living area. This sort of circular seating area, the sun terrace, as they call it. It's actually got pop-up backrests. So these backrests come up so you can make them into either dining space or you can put those down and then make them into more of a lounging area. But this is a really, really lovely living space in its own right. And you've still got really good access through to all of the ground tackle as well. Practical space forward, but this is a really great area to chill out. Now let's head downstairs to the lower deck and take a look at the crew cabin. Crew space, a very important part of the boat. You want good crew, you want to attract good people, well, you need to give them a nice place to live. And this, for this size of boat, is impressive. Again, you can see the amount of space I've got, and it's not just cabins down here. There's a bit of a mess area. One of the most substantial bloody up tables I've ever seen is just incredible build quality down here and that's another thing it doesn't feel that much of a departure from the rest of the interior you've still got the nice walnut you've got the match grain here you've got sink decent sized fridge an oven bit of storage yeah it's, it's a nice space separate bathroom of course it's a shower room and you have bunks on one side and then a skipper's cabin on the other really impressive and it's connected directly to another impressive space which is the engine room. And again, you can feel every inch of Choi Lee CL Yachts commercial shipbuilding in this engine room. It is absolutely immaculate. Access to everything is superb. You've got a pair of 1,900 horsepower K2 
Caterpillar C32s. Top speed of this thing is 25 knots, but at 10 and a half knots, you've got over 2,000 miles of range. So you can cover some serious ground on this thing or go along at 20 knots if you want to really get a move on. Again, you can see the scale of everything's really good. These, incidentally, fit onto the platform out there, which we'll obviously have a look at in a minute. It's really easy to get to all the panels as well. Beautifully lit, massive ventilation. You've got twin collar generators on either side. And I'd like to see this as well. You've got really, really easy access to the fuel filters and you've got a switch system as well. So if one of them gets blocked, you don't have to stop and change one. You just switch it over and it's running through the other filter. Clear bowls as well, so you can, with your eye, check the quality of the fuel. It's a really professional setup, much like the helm station. So there you have it. That is the CL Yachts CLX 96 in a very, very crowded marketplace populated with boats from some of the best in the business. This thing really is something quite different, quite refreshing. I, I hope you agree, but let me know. Get in the comments and let me know what you think of the CL Yachts CLX 96. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a like, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you're notified every time we upload a new video.